Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing and blessed day. I got something pretty hot off the presses I want to bring to you, but have you ever heard the saying, we need to balance grace and truth? I, I've heard that a lot lately, and up front that sounds really good. We need to balance grace and truth. If we're bringing Jesus to people, we need to bring grace, but we need to balance it with truth. And I just want to decode that for a minute and actually interpret the Christianese out of it and exactly what we're saying. Because we say a lot of things and we mean a lot of things and we don't really clarify. So what we are saying when we say we need to balance grace and truth is we need to balance the love, mercy, and compassion of God with the law, the rules and regulations. That's what we're saying. And that sounds good. Like we need to tell people that they need to do right, get right, and be right. But we need to do it in a way that is loving and compassionate and merciful. Is really what that saying says. And I agreed with it for a long time. But... I got hit with this verse, and this verse completely blew that idea out of the water. And you can look it up. It's in the book of John, the first chapter, verse 17. Look it up. John 1, 17 says that Moses brought the law, but Jesus brought grace and truth. Moses brought the law, but Jesus brought grace and truth. And I was like, wait a second. If Moses brought the law and Jesus brought truth, that means those are two different things. Two different things. They are not the same thing. And I'm not one to take a verse and say this is gospel truth if we just take one verse. But I just want to think about it. Let's just think about it a little deeper. And what is the law? Well, you have the Mosaic law, which nobody follows. Like we all point to the Mosaic law and, and we pick and choose the laws that we like and we forget about the laws that we don't. We don't realize that there's 613 Old Testament Jewish laws. One, I'd just like to point out, 613th law of the book of of the Jewish religion is to kill all the Amaleks. Just want to point that out, throwing that out there. Anyway, so there is a lot of laws that we decide that we are going to follow. And then there's a lot of laws that we ignore and pretend not to. And as Christians, we kind of make up our own laws and say this is the right way and this is the wrong way and that in itself is what the law means it's a bunch of rules and regulations a bunch of have to's and a bunch of cannots but then what is truth what is truth what is the word truth mean we throw that around we say stuff like there's ultimate truth and if we think about it though what is truth Truth is facts. Truth is reality. Truth is. You know, we say stuff like the laws of physics. You know, we have a, let's study the laws of physics. Well, that is incorrect. It should be the facts of physics. Because the law of physics says that if you drop something, it goes down. The law of gravity. Well, that's not a law, that's a reality. It's fact. So when Jesus brings truth, it isn't law, it's facts, it's reality. Now, he didn't bring the laws of physics. He wasn't teaching on how the ground works. Like he taught a lot about, uh, you know, seed time and harvest. But he wasn't teaching that. He was teaching principles on the kingdom of God. So he brought the reality, the facts of God. Think about that. That's what Jesus brought. He brought reality. He brought facts. 
He didn't bring more rules and regulations, more have-tos and must-dos and can't-dos. He brought the perspective of God. So, as an example, as an example, Jesus went into a temple one day, and I'm just going to bring it into modern-day English. So, he goes to church on a Sunday. The pastor's up there preaching away condemnation. You got to do this. You got to do that. You have to do this. You have to do that. And Jesus walks in and you got all the old elders and the religious people and their butts just puckered up. Oh my God, that guy, he's a heretic coming in here preaching the wrong doctrine. And everybody's upset at him because he's been healing people on the Sabbath. Like how dare he heal people on the Sabbath? I mean, you got six days a week you can heal people. Let me just ask you this. If you were having a heart attack and you went to the hospital and they said, oh, I'm sorry, it's the Sabbath. We can't ha- help you. Would you be upset? Would you be like, wait a second. What? No, I need help now. I don't care if it's the Sabbath. Well, that's the idea and the mentality of those people back then is that they were upset that he was doing things outside the law and rules and regulations. And just a side note, the Sabbath has has so many rules and regulations around it, it's insane. It has got to be the, out of the Ten Commandments, it has the most rules around it. But here's the thing, Jesus walks in, he interrupts the service, everybody is looking at him, and he asks this question, he says, Is it right to do good on the Sabbath or to do evil? And that is the point. Is it right to do good on the Sabbath or is it right to do evil? And then he tells this crippled guy who had a crippled hand, and he says, stretch out your hand, and he does it, and he's automatically healed. And if that's not like the proverbial finger to all the religious people around, I don't know what is. I think it's awesome. But, what? and then what does he say? He says that the Sabbath, that man, the Son of Man is in, is in control of the Sabbath. No, he's sorry. He says, sorry, I messed that up. But he says, so that you know that the Son of Man is in control of the Sabbath. He, then he heals the guy. But then he says this. He says, don't you realize, well, he doesn't say don't you. He says that the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And what he brought was truth. What he brought was reality. God's perspective. God gave us the law, the rules and regulation. He gave us the Sabbath. He gave us all these things to bless us, to bless us, not to condemn us, not to bring death and destruction, not to harm us or bring harm to others. He brought it to bless us. That's why he gave it to us. The Sabbath was made to bless people. But if you use it in a way that is destructive, then you are missing the point. And that's Jesus' whole ministry. It's like you guys are missing the point. See, he said that the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But he has come to bring life and life more abundantly. That's the point. That's the point. So we need to not balance grace and truth. And I'd like to to dive deeper into to grace, but we don't have time. But we don't balance those two. That's ridiculous. We're not going to balance God's mercy and love and compassion with his reality and facts. Hello? No, we need to take his grace and his truth, and we need to look at the law, it's kind of funny, through those eyes. We need to look at the law through the eyes 
of grace and truth. And then we will realize that it is not to condemn. Jesus said, I have not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. It is not that used to hurt and bring harm or death or destruction. The devil brings death and destruction, and he is a liar. But Jesus brings life and life more abundantly. So everything that I've been saying on this whole series says that we need to choose what works, and we need to choose what brings life. And then we, if we look at the law, if we look at any law, whether it's judicial or or religious, and if, if, if it's not bringing life and it's actually bringing death, then that is of the devil. But if it is bringing life, see, you can have the Sabbath, and we should have Sabbath because we're designed to have rest. But if you do it in a religious way, it will bring death. Isn't that awesome? Isn't, that, isn't it just like, Wait a second, we're not going to balance God's grace and mercy with God's facts and reality. Like, that's, that's ridiculous. So that saying is ridiculous. But what we need to do is we need to take Jesus' viewpoint, take God's perspective, and then see the laws and rules and regulations and see how they can bless us and keep us. So I went longer than I wanted to. But there's so much there. I'm going to make a longer video on this so we can get d dive deeper into the different verses and what grace really is. But that's the point. We need to see Jesus' perspective on all these things. And is it bringing life or is it not? Hope that blesses you today. Have a great, amazing day.